Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever and whenever you're, you're listening to me on Facebook, on Instagram, and Twitter. Welcome. If you have your Bibles, open with me to the Gospel of Matthew. If not, just listen in and turn off everything, shut out all the noise, and let's have church. Amen. Let's have revival. Let's hear from God. Preaching today, two simple verses, two openings. The first from Matthew chapter 23. And these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. The 33rd verse of the 23rd chapter of Matthew. And Jesus says, You serpents. How'd you like it if a preacher began his sermon this Sunday morning by looking at you and calling you the devil, calling you a snake, calling you a serpent? But Jesus said to the people of his generation, to the masses, to the multitude, to those who he had healed, delivered, fed the 5,000 and the 3,000, cast out devils, to the religious leaders of Israel, the, the, the vaunted Sanhedrin, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he said, you serpents, you generation of vipers, how shall Ye escape the damnation of hell. That is the question that Jesus Christ asked of his generation. And it is the same question that I am asking of the United States of America. America, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? I know there's not another preacher in America right now that will tell you that hell is real. That will tell you at least... A, at least a well-known preacher, at least a famous preacher, at least somebody on television who will tell you that, that hell is real, that hell is hot, that the fire rages on, that the flames of hell have not been extinguished, that God has not installed air conditioning in hell. The eternal, everlasting, burning hell is real and that forever is a very long time. And that in hell, time is only a concept. But Jesus asked of his generation, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? The fact is that I'm a sinner, you're a sinner, we're all sinners. And the Bible said the wages of sin is death. That means physical death, spiritual death, eternal death, and the second death. It means the lake which burns with fire and brimstone unless you escape it. There is one and only one way to escape it. And that is the cross upon which Jesus died. The blood that he there shed. I want to go all the way around America when these churches open to revivals. And I want to preach a sermon called the ABCs of Christianity. The altar, the blood, and the cross. Amen. We need to get back to basics. That means Bible answers so I can survive. We need to focus on Christ. That means fix our concentration upon the Savior. So today, as we turn to the 25th chapter of Matthew and to my other passage, my other text, as you're turning to Matthew 25, I want you, and verse 41, I want to give you my title. Now, the title of this message is going to reveal to you why I'm not a famous television evangelist. The, the title of this message is going to reveal to you why there aren't a lot of emails in my inbox inviting me to come preach right now. Basically, because pastors and Christians and, and, and church members and sinners, they don't want to hear what I have to say because I tell the truth. I'm not on the payroll of any denomination or organization. Amen. Now don't shout me down now because I'm preaching real good. It's quiet in here. This message that I'm going to give you today is why my phone is not ringing off the hook. My gospel empties the mega churches. Amen. It doesn't fill the mega churches. I tell pastors and people all over this nation that the only thing the modern church growth movement is growing is cancer. The whole leaven has been lumped with apostasy. Setting the stage for the rise of the Antichrist. Apocalypse and Armageddon. The title of my message today is threefold and the three points are right in the message. 
why there is a hell. That's point number one. Who's already in hell? That's point two. And why you, and I said you, are going to hell. Going there. That's point number three. Other preachers have PowerPoints. I have powered my points. So I'd highly advise you to fire your pastor. To fire your favorite media church, electronic church celebrity and personality. And come over and hear a real man of God. Who God has called as a prophet to this nation to call America not to prosperity, not to a purpose, not to politics, not to psychology, not to, 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 to popularity, but to repentance. Back to the blood, back to the cross, back to the altar, back to the ABCs of Christianity. Have you found Matthew 25? One verse, very simple. Jesus again speaking. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me. Same thing he said in Matthew 7.21 to those who professed and confessed and bragged and boasted in arrogance, We have cast out devils in your name. We have healed. We have done miracles in your name. And Jesus says, Depart from me. I never knew you. Depart from me, you cursed, into what? Everlasting fire. Now notice the next phrase is very important. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Point number one. Why there is a hell? Because Satan led a coup against God and a third of the angels, known as the cherubim, followed him in his rebellion. And it lasted about five seconds until Satan was cast as lightning to the earth. And Jesus said he saw the fall of the prince of the power of the air to the earth. And God said, I have prepared everlasting burning hell for the devil and for his angels. Now the good news in point number one is God did not prepare hell for human beings. God did not plan to burn the whole world in hell. Like he didn't plan to send the flood and drown the whole world in the days of Noah. But man sinned. God warned. But man kept sinning. Now God has sent COVID to warn. He sent coronavirus to warn. And yet the party goes on. The sin goes on. The idolatry, imagery, iconotry, and worship of likenesses goes on. And we ignore the wrath of God and keep on sinning. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why there's a hell. And why so many of you are going there. Don't shout me down, no, because I'm preaching real good. Well, I'm not going to send you an offering. Good, I don't want your money. I'm the only preacher in this country that didn't care about money. I don't take up offerings. This is a, this is a pro bono ministry. Glory be to God. We're private. I'm not preaching for your money. I'm not preaching to make you happy. I'm not preaching to kiss you. You know what? I'm not preaching to tickle your ears. I'm preaching to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. You don't have to go to hell. God sends no one to hell. You send yourself by rejecting Jesus Christ. But believe me, the cross is the only thing standing between you and an eternity in the fire of hell. And if you don't repent of your sin, Jesus said in Luke 13, verse 3, and repeated it in verse 5, He said, except ye, and that means you, except ye repent, you shall all likewise perish. Everybody knows John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But have you ever heard verse 17 and 18? He that believeth not is condemned already, for he loved the darkness more than the light. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, there's verses every sinner knows by heart. Judge not, lest you be judged. Every sinner I ever met on the street can quote that verse. But look, the same Bible that says, Judge not, lest you be judged. In the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 24, Jesus says, Judge righteous 
judgment. That's what I do as a prophet of God. In Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 2, in Ezekiel 22 and verse 2, God said to Ezekiel, Wilt thou judge them, O man of God? And he said the same thing to me when he called me. And so when I preach the gospel, it is saying, If you don't repent, you will be judged by God in hell. And even though he didn't design hell for you in mind, you can go there. If you reject Jesus Christ, why there's a hell as a penalty, as a prison. Hell is God's eternal lockdown, eternal quarantine, eternal shutdown of sin. Hell is the ultimate social distancing in a place that Jesus called outer darkness where there's weeping. And gnashing of teeth. Who's already there? Point two. Many of your family members. Many of your friends. People say rest in peace. They're not resting in peace. The dead's not resting in peace. Oh, he or she's in a better place. No, they're not. Their troubles are over. No, they're not. They've just begun. Every pope who's ever lived is in hell. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the murderer, is in hell. Mother Teresa, who trusted in her works and trusted in the former Virgin Mary, is in hell. Every Dalai Lama has ever lived is in hell. Mohammed is in hell. Are, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Brigham Young is in hell. Do I really have to keep spelling this out? There is one way to heaven. One way. It's not Muhammad. It's not Allah. It's not the former Virgin Mary. It's not your good works. It's not how much money you give. You have to come by the altar of the cross and you have to repent of the sin of religion to receive the righteousness of God. If you're trusting what you do, what you say, your last name, where you go to church, those are your works. The Bible said we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Jesus Christ is to be the one and the only object of our faith and objective of our faith. Faith in anything else but Jesus Christ and Him crucified is idolatry. It is spiritual adultery. It is sin against God. Jesus is the only way. Why there's a hell? Who's already there? And why you're going there? You're going there because you're a sinner. Other preachers won't even say the, th the word sin. Other preachers can't even define sin. They won't preach a gospel of conviction. Instead, they preach a gospel of convenience. They preach a gospel of carnality. They preach a gospel of compromise. But, but, but you see, I preach a gospel of conviction. When I preach, the Spirit of God comes and He convicts you of drunkenness, of covetousness, of greed, of idolatry, of living together outside of marriage, of, of extramarital uh, sex, of pornography, of perversion, of drugs, you name it. Whatever your sin is, you can't sin and have your salvation too. Jesus Christ does not save you in your sin. He saves you from your sin. He pulls you out of your sin and he leads you to sanctification, holiness, and righteousness through the blood of the cross. That's why there is a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun. Nobody else preaches on hell. I do. If you don't want to go to hell, you can go to heaven. But you have to get on your knees and pray through to your breakthrough. And you have to repent of idols Images and icons say, God, I'm sorry. Say, God, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Wash me in the blood of Jesus Christ. I repent of my sin. And then ask him in. Say, Jesus, come into my heart today. Come in to stay. Do that. And you can join me in heaven. Singing and shouting the praise and the glory of God forever. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll talk to you next time. This is Pastor Mike. I love you. God bless.